And now we have so much to say. I used to teach six hours. But since I'm a little late, today I try and remember that I was a little late and let you go before six hours has expired. Oh yes, I did. Used to teach right here in Chicago. Six hours, brother. Yes, sir. That's no long time. Since we've been here for 400 years and never have been able to get away. So now we are uh, getting the news of getting out of the confines of our enemies. And that is very good news. As long as our enemies have the upper hand, our authority is over us, we can never hope for anything like human freedom. We got to get authorities for ourselves. <clears throat> I don't know what you thinking about us and what we have to say to you. But we have plenty to say. We just want to know where to start. You know, people who have been preaching Christianity all their lives, the religion of Satan. Oh, this is what he said. That's just what I said, brother. <laughs> now, if you believe that there is a devil, and which you see him every hour, if you want to, or more than that, he stays before you. Then, if he wants to try to deceive you while he know you but you don't know him. He makes up a religion. He know you are born righteous, created righteous. But he know you have deceived you to make you think that you and him is the same. Before God, God think as much of him as he does you. But he's mistaken. And you have been deceived. You are all right today if you just will accept your own religion. And no getting on knees to ask for forgiveness for your past. All of that is forgiven. God told me to tell you that he will forgive us all the past. Just accept your own now. Go from here. And not think over what happened in the past. You did not know who you were and how the enemy. So that is right and just that you should be forgiven for that which you had no knowledge of. So this is what he told me to tell you. And since we don't have to go on our knees for yesterday, be sure that we go on our knees for today. 
a people that have did everything that the devil did and tried to beat him at some of it get forgiven for all of that evil you certainly should be happy because I myself was not Elijah Muhammad in those days and so I thank him for forgiving me of such evil things that I did while I was under the devil though he said he forgave me but I thank him for forgiving me We're happy to have Minister Farrakhan of number seven with us. This is an honor to us. Minister of number one, minister of practically all of our temples around. So let us show our visiting ministers that we respect their visit and their help in the work that we are doing here. We are happy. <clears throat> the time, as I have said many times, we have no time until motion is made. Then we calculate for motion the time. The sun <clears throat> is so powerful that it makes everything in its cycle to move. There we calculate time from sun. The sun being the greatest planet in our world Sun family that we can never even understand just why that we don't understand the sun. But that is one planet you can't understand. It was written that you can't understand. God didn't make it to be understood by you and me. Because it is a divine uh, light put up there for you and I to read. Read not only the sun, but read what that thing looked like. And what is for? What did God put the sun up there for us to learn? It's a shining light. And it don't rotate round nothing. But God himself. No planet is attractive enough to force the sun to bow. But she is attractive enough to force every planet within her reach to bow. We have not learned what we should have learned because of our enemy. Now the sun is a, a similar to of the work of God. That is why you can't understand 
you don't know where she's getting her fuel from. But she's shining. <laughs> so much that I would like to bring you into the knowledge of that I can't do it in a few minutes. Allah and the personal master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, to teach me of the sun. He got up and stood up and looked at me, said, if you ask me again, I won't visit you no more. So I wondered, why couldn't I ask him that? So the next day he came to me, he looked like he said, a poor boy asked the question, I'm God, I suppose to answer what he asked me. And then he started teaching me a little about the sun. Not much though. Oh no. So don't be getting your ears tuned up. Oh no. But I can say we have a mighty sun. Well, I tell you one thing like this. A man that is given a world to channel and to bring that world to its knees to Almighty God. The man needs to know something. He just actually cannot do his work without plenty of knowledge. Take for an instant that all I teach you challenge it. But you never did challenge it, Christianity. You took for granted that Christianity was just right. That's because you were born in it. You know no better. But I would like for you to think a little while I teach. The enemy that made your father and my father a slave to the knowledge of self do you think that he would have made you have the knowledge of Almighty God when that he had robbed you of that knowledge? Do you think he would be so kind to teach you God and his good religion? And knowing that you are directly from God, that's what he brought you here for to take you away from God, not to teach you God. Take you out of the knowledge of God and yourself too. So that he could get you to follow him to the hell that your God and my God have promised him. He know he was not going to rule forever. Why should he rise in you up? When the day that you wakes up, you'll be the first one to want to push him into hellfire. He knows all of that. So don't try to tell him nothing. He knows it. It's you the one need to be told something. He have a world full of our people called Reverend Jones and Reverend Jackson and Reverend whatnot. After his name. 
they feel happy for him to call them reverends. That's all he will call them. Just say reverend. And he feel big. Not before God. And the devil laughing at him under his sleeves. No, Reverend, he don't think nothing of you. He loved to see you loving him for honor. But he know his honor will not stand before those who are honored by God. You are nothing before Allah. He only wants you to be Reverend Junaza Bezek to be uh, no I'm not calling you out of your name that was the name of a king he said in the Bible but he was not say a good king <clears throat> don't think I'm in a hurry As much work that I'm doing that is standing out in the light of divine, the reverends rather listen to the devil and have his praise than to have the praise of divine. That is written in the Bible that they love the praise of this world. This we see. As long as they have seen me at this divine work and is making progress all over the world with it, not here in Chicago alone, but I have credit and honor all over the world. <laughs> while Reverend don't have honor in Chicago. If you are here, Reverend, I'm glad that you may hear this. In some places, they don't want to even see you. When you talk about Christianity, they want to kill you. Once upon a time, you love to talk about going to Africa to preach the devil Christianity over there. That's what it is, it's the devil's Christianity. Stand up and let's pass our knowledge over. And I will show you that it's the devil's religion and not yours. It's a lie that the devil used a good name on to make you believe it. Oh, Mr. Muhammad called Christianity a lie? Yes. And I can make you out a lie if you believe it. I am here against the world of the enemy who calls his religion Christianity and against you that believe it. I am here against both he and his followers. Prove it to you by your own Bible that the devil was cast in a lake of fire with his false prophets. A reverend who preaches Christianity is the false prophet that the book is referring to. Who went down with his name. You love to be called 
Reverend Jackson, Reverend John, don't know that you're being called after the, the devil's name. This is the devil's name, Reverend, that you're being called by. And Reverend, you will be dumped into a lake of fire with him. If you don't come on and go along with Elijah Muhammad. I am very happy to have you distinguished brothers here of the profession of Dr. Dennis. And TV. Dr. Edward Pullen, I guess that's the way, something there. And if I'm wrong in pronouncing your names, please ask me or tell me how to pronounce it. Also, Dr. Tunner Smith and Dennis. Joseph Robertson, and Mr. Frank Ditto, WXYZ TV show, Mr. Leon, <clears throat> Brother Leon Drake. Planet Administrator. We're very happy to have such professional people as you with us this afternoon. We are the people who have respect and honor for all that visit us. And when the professional class of people visit us, we want you to know that we honor you and respect you for your visiting. We need you. We are not the people that know all. We are the people that would like to learn and let learn. This is the type of people that we need now to help us. Yes, to help us. We want all the professional class of people to come, join up with us, help put the job on. You have the type of help that we need. And we are working for you. Come in and help us to work for you. We are building everywhere something like signs of our work that we are doing in the name of divine. These people of this type of profession 
I thank you. You are the one I want to talk with. Because the men have no learning and no profession cannot help me. Only just believe. But he can't do the work that is needed to be done. So I'm thankful for you and I will assure you that if you represent yourself with us, the devil himself will turn and honor you. This is one reason why the professional class of our people don't come and visit us, see what we are saying and doing. It's due to the fact they think the enemy will not give them as the common saying go a break. You don't need the enemy to give you a break. If you do for self, you'll give your own self a break. We have been beggars of the blue-eyed devils so long until we don't think we get in a place unless we get his respect. But I say, brother, he's going down, we're going up. He's going down to dishonor and disrespect. You're going up in honor and respect. I am your teacher of the enemy and you see me stand here and tell you the truth of them but they have greater respect for me than they have for you Whether you believe it or not, they have respect yes, for me. Did you hear about how they respected me in 59 when I visited Washington? Yes, they come out and met me. And they stayed around me to protect me from some maybe would be silly act of yourself. They were not going to have it said that they was not trying to protect me from you. They were not going to do anything to me. But they it was afraid of you. So they give me all the protection that they could from the airport and return to the airport. Yes, sir. Right. That's true. So when have Reverend ever went to Washington and gotten such respect? When have Reverend ever of our black brothers been escorted up and down Pennsylvania Avenue? Never. Reverend, I think you ought to wake up. When I come here, they're all up and down the street watching. They're watching me more closer than my own followers. Because for you to throw a rock at me, they'd be charged for it. 
but your rock won't land on me no way. I love to talk about the worthy praise that we should give our Savior Allah. Because he goes out with me like your Bible teach you and he comes in with me. Though I'm in a valley of death, nevertheless, I fear no evil. So let us give praise to the coming of Allah to take us out of the hell of the blue-eyed devil and destroy him and save us from his destruction. That's the God you've been praying for. Now he's here and I prove that he's here that I walk up and down the street or ride up and down the street alone or with you. Nobody bothers me. I'm not out there afraid that he's going to get me for what I said here today about him. He's afraid that I'm... <clears throat> yeah, that may get him. I have power with God to do my will on them and you too. But I don't want to do nothing to you but good. You are my brother and my sister. You can say to hell with you, Muhammad, if you want to. But I know a day that will be long soon that you will say heaven to Muhammad. <laughs> beautiful, very beautiful city. You look beautiful from, from up here. I stand here and talk to you all this afternoon. <laughs> Your brother. I hope you hear this. Do not be trying to force no one to sell Muhammad's speak. They don't want to sell them, leave them go. No brother that has not been registered up with us have no obligation whatsoever to help you and me do anything unless it's his will. Now cut this out. Don't you going to be dismissed for a long time. I don't know where you get such foolish ideas. People go off and laugh at you. Cut it out. We don't force nobody to do anything for us. We don't force you that is registered up with us to do anything for us. You do according to your will. We are not people that is forced to have people to beg for us. No. 
You don't have to beg for us. Allah is sufficient. And I hope that the captains, secretaries, and assistant ministers will bring you to justice and send you off for a long time. You're running our on teaching. We are independent. We don't have to beg nobody. But Allah, you're losing your head. I don't want no such followers, beggars, beg nobody. Yeah. You don't love us enough to do something from your own will for us. We don't want that unwilling done. Brother tells you that he don't care to sell no paper, take them back. Give them away before ever that you be disgraced by such brother. We are a very foolish people anyway. And I don't like that you be like that. I want you to be intelligent and show the world how intelligent look and the act of a human being. <clears throat> Time brings about all things. Time is making you manifest. They call it resurrection. To resurrect the dead, they don't mean resurrecting a, a uh, physical dead, but a mental dead. So you must remember that for 400 years we have been a mental dead people. <clears throat> I have a little kind of bad uh, interfered voice. However, I hope you will understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say. As when I got to the school, House, the teacher was dismissing her school. And so don't blame me. Blame those that helped me back. I don't guess you were born down north where I was born. I was born down north. And if you were big enough to work, they put you in the field. Because the devil was forcing your parents to, <clears throat> to send you to field and to work for him. Well, I guess that's about enough for that. The time, what time? The time of God, the time of Allah. We give him the name Allah, but you call him God, that's one of his names, one of his 99 attributes is God too. But when we say Allah, we mean God. It's an Arab name. And we like to have the use of the Arab name because 
the devil have no respect for the name that he teach you to call the supreme thing. God, he used the same name to curse with. He take it for a, a joke. Disrecognize. You fall in behind him and do the same. You disgrace the name of God divine. But I want you to remember that the time have come that the enemy of God divine will not have a chance to go around mocking God and his people forever. They have a right that the mockers of God must be bagged up and thrown in a furniture fire. He wants you to go with him. He wants me to go with him and be burned with the same fire that Allah has prepared for him. But by Allah raising me up from among you, giving me the knowledge of both God, the God devil and the God divine, to teach you what has been hidden from you for the last 400 years, the last 6,000 years. I want you to know that the people all over the world have been robbed of the knowledge of the God divine due to the work of this devil. He given this time to do his work, his will upon the people. Now today, he has made himself present to prove to you and me that he just won, that he can remove Satan at once. But he's offering us a chance. I warn you to accept it and glorify it. This is no time to waste. This is no time to spend in sport and playing, talking foolishness. This is a time of world destruction. Not, say, just a few people, but a world destruction. Everywhere. The people cannot get along with each other in peace. No agreement. Nothing but disagreement. So I warn you that any day now you could expect most anything of evil, but not of good. Evil world must be cast out. The evil world must be destroyed. The evil world must be shown to you and me. The justice of God to destroy her. She is destroying us and had us blind, deaf, and dumb without the knowledge of it. Now she's open wide to you and me that we may know her and that God is not done and injustice to her by destroying her. He's justified in destroying her. 
He will punish you if you go on with it. He will punish you on this side. Disgrace you or let you disgrace yourself. So I want you to remember to escape this disgracement Come follow me. <coughs> no, I'm not going to be here along with you. I don't care what you say about Elijah Muhammad. He will not be rolling in the streets with his eyes set in his head over punishment and disgrace from Allah. Because I'm not going to disobey you. And I'm going to teach you what he taught me to teach you. <laughs> what you see me do, such this history. And you can read every step I take in the light of history. I'm that fellow that you read of. Then the book, I come to do thy will, O oh Lord. This is him. That was not no 2,000 years ago. Jesus didn't come to do the will of God at that time. He did his will by leaving uh, the Jews and the Christian live out that time. And he went back and he said that he was ahead of time. But he said that that one coming behind him will be on time. And he will do what he would like to have done. But he was ahead of time. So he prophesied that that one will come and he'll come directly from the face of God. And some of the other prophets prophesied that he would send you one from his face. Well, I'm directly from his face for three and a half years. And you want to, and you cannot do it, the things that they did to the prophets before me. This one you can't touch. This is the one that, that the Bible warned you of. Touch not mine anointing. This is the one that was sent directly from his face. And he did uh, to, uh, by you to do harm to me. Well, I guess you know all of that. And you see it now. The thing that I do and say in the face of the enemy, he can't do a thing but listen at it. Because he know I'm directly from the face of God that his book warns him against touching. So he wants to live long as he can, as the book teaches us, that <clears throat> all that a man have will he give for his life. The time. The time have arrived for what? What are you talking about time, Mama? The time and the end 
of Satan, whom you believe in. Now push the clock of time back and give him some more time if you can. But his time have arrived and you have, with your ignorance of self and of the devil, have kept him living for around 60 years over his time. But Allah and myself standing here before you have agreed that time has been given long enough If I don't tell you these truths, you will bring me for it. But I'm not going to let you have nothing to blame me for. I'm going to do the will of God that sent me. And his will is that I tell you. And your rejection and your disbelief is up to him. I'm not forced to <clears throat> make you to believe in that which you don't. We have Mr. Roosevelt Haywood, Jr., counsel at large from Gary, Indiana, who wants to thank him for his presence wherever he is. We always desire our people to come and visit us. Reverend Clifford Blunt, that's a, that's a pretty bad name, in one way and a good one in another. Minister of Fellowship uh, symbol. I reckon this means C-O-M-M -M. Yeah. Church. Fellowship a symbol of community church. Reverend John A. Land three X, yeah. Yeah. That's what you mean here, yeah, three X. A long Oh Reverend John A. Land. The third minister fellowship as symbol uh, of the community church. I thank you, Reverend Haywood. No, this is not a Reverend, he was counsel at large, Gary and Anna. Out there we are trying to get acquainted in Gary. We want to build an airport out there. <laughs> and we're just going to do just that. I need all the reverends that want to come to Islam where they will get a big reverend, yes, big name. I need you to help me with the people whom you and the devil dump. Oh, 
So I thank Reverend Barry, Thomas Barry, minister, for his presence. Ministers, if you and me would get together, we'd have our people in heaven overnight. All of these ministers here are kind of changing my subject a little for fear that they won't understand my previous subject too well. In the Bible, It prophesies there in the Bible that behold, I will send you Elijah, Reverend. And the book did not put Reverend to his name. I'm only saying, Reverend, to you the preachings that you ought to be preaching so you get your great name. The name, Reverend, uh, for some kind of organization of Satan, you'll never get no credit with the people of God. We are the people of God. I tell the devil in Rome, that he's lying to you. They have made you go astray. Plain as you can read this, before that great and dreadful day of the Lord, I will send you Elijah. Not Reverend Elijah. If you say you disbelieve that I am that man that will be sent just before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, go read again. And then study what's going on in the world. Everybody's looking for the great thing of destruction to happen. Elijah's preaching and warning you. This is he. I will assure you that if you join up with me, Reverend, follow me, so that this whining here on that boy will not overtake you unaware. And all of the churches of America into one church cannot save the people of the church from the great disaster that is now falling America and the worst is yet to come. You cannot find a God in your church. I don't care what you say you have, but I'm asking them to do something to put a stop to the destruction that is all in America today. Even the president don't warn you to pray to the church's God to help them. No man at war today will ask you to pray to the church God to put a stop to their slaughtering. 
No. But the Muslims sit by and look at you. Knowing that you are like the people that the Bible tell you that worship Baal. And Elijah sat there and laughed at him. The same thing that goes for you, I don't care how so you get with me, call on your God and tell him to do something about it. This is what you need. Some frank teachings. If I make a mistake in what you would call making fun of your God, I would give you $10,000 out of my brother's vest pocket. Right here before you leave, I'll check for it. And our checks is very good. You got nothing but a lie from your blue-eyed Caucasian devil. trying to make fun, I'm just making truth, not fun. No, if I was just making fun, I would not have said it. I would be afraid of meeting the consequence when I leave the stand. Knowing that you are going to meet the consequence yourself, for believing in these devils to teach you away from your own God and the salvation in which he has sent to you. He wants you to reject it since he's going to hell. He wants you to go too. Not as long as I'm here. Not going to send you to hell just because that you're are ignorant to the knowledge of yourself. Now beat you up a little bit. Yeah. Hi, Salam Alaikum. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, I am very happy to see your smiling faces here this afternoon. And I hope that you will leave smiling. We have plenty to tell you, whether you accept it or not. But we do have plenty to tell you, that we hardly know where it begins. I'm a little late. Ah, oh, that's right. If we have waited 400 years, I do think 
about four hours would not hurt you. I'm very happy to learn uh, that there is some preacher of the uh, Christian churches here with us this afternoon. <laughs> Reverend, I hope that you enjoy what we have to say. I have a kind of a, a new book, I guess, to you. Uh, it's called The Holy Quran. And that uh, it verifies what is written in the Bible. And the Bible verifies the Quran. The Bible is a hit of the Quran. The Quran is a late scripture. The Bible is an old scripture. And the Holy Quran only about near 1400 years old. <coughs> But the Bible is 4,000 years old or more. It was given to Moses on the, the choosing of Allah and the rise of Moses. He was risen up among the well, not among uh, the white race, whom we have learned now to be definite. A race of devils. This is what we are teaching you. And if you don't believe it, I'm sorry for your future. I don't think it should be hard for the black man of America to learn that the white race is devil. I don't think it should be hard to learn. For it was the devil who led us. We did not rear ourselves up in North America. It was the devil <laughs> who read our pants up from slavery. Some may say, no, no, no. He wasn't the devil because we are here and we are preaching and singing and we all feel happy. But that was created in you. You are from creation and the white man is from make. We made the white man. Let us make men. I want the preacher to listen to all I have to say. I mean Christian preachers. And then I wish that you ask me anything that I don't make clear to you, to make it more clear. Since you are students and preachers of the Scripture Bible, then you ought to know me. Because the Bible prophesies of 
Elijah coming to you. And I am Elijah. This man prophesied in the Bible teaches you that he first must come first. He must first come, meaning he must come before God to make a way for God to come. Let's talk about it, uh, Reverend. If that man has to come first, not God first, but he must send this man first, then he comes after this man. What is this man, and what, and why is he so important that he must go ahead of God? Let's get acquainted with each other, Evan. He must prepare the way. Why don't God prepare the way? Why should he send Elijah to prepare the way? Because he prepared Elijah to prepare the way. This is done by government. Nations all over the earth, they sent an ambassador to a foreign nation to get acquainted with that nation so that the king or uh, the president or uh, the people of a foreign land may get acquainted with a foreign nation so that they can See if they can make friends with each other. I'm here to get you acquainted with God. So that we can see whether or not that you are able to live with God after your acquaintance. It is impossible for an enemy of God to make people friends or uh, establish a friendship between the two. That's impossible unless you change the nature. Listen to that is good, Reverend. We cannot recognize a preacher sent from the devil to lead us to God. Because he will try to get our acquaintance with the true God according to his trainings by the enemy of the true God. I'm not trying to make uh, enemies between us. I'm trying to make friendship. <laughs> the thing that has happened between our black Christian preachers and the preachers of Islam, they actually believe that what the blue-eyed devils have taught them is right, and that they themselves, being led 
by the blue eyed devils that they will get to heaven even ahead of us. And he's leading you directly to hell. This is what I'm risen up in your midst to put a stop to you falling an enemy of God and you think he's a friend to his hell that he has made because by nature he was made to make hell for the righteous. We are here with truth. We are here to be attacked by the world of the devil and win over him. Christianity is dying a natural death. Everybody that is awakening to the very root of Christianity of the white race is turning it down. <laughs> Reverend, your whole church is getting chilly. I just want you and I to take our place as brothers. I'm not going against you because pretty soon you will surely come over to Elijah, Mama. I read in the Bible in the Revelation, that last book of the Bible, where well, that it prophesies that the devil and his followers, his representatives, will be going down in a lake of fire. <laughs> and I know who that this is. This is the preachers of Christianity that is black men and women due to the lack of knowledge of their enemy and his religion. He deceives them. But I want to show you that I have the key to the knowledge of the devil and the knowledge of you. <laughs> I'm here in the midst of the devil and I dare not to bite my tongue. I'm going to keep the teeth off of my tongue so I can use it to speak the plain truth. We are living in a time called the resurrection. Resurrection means to rise up. Resurrection means that everybody come to the knowledge of the truth on the rise. I am one that was also dead. Allah, the God of the universe, he risen me to come and rise you up.
This is all. <coughs> this is also. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is also written in your book. That this man that he chooses for his messenger or his apostle, the Bible says prophet. I'm not sent as a prophet. I'm the end of prophet. You don't need a prophet today. You need direction. And direction is a mission to lead you in the right path, directing you from himself to God in reality. If the devil had preached to believe in God, the true God, he would not have been a devil. <laughs> They're out there today with the city filled with their voices. But they're only out there trying to deceive. <laughs> you that they are directly from God and preaching God. Tell him then, why don't you call him Malavian? He said, well, that's, we mean the same, that's the Mohammed name for God. You'll tell him then, who is the uh, name of, of the God that you are preaching? Ask them again, who made the Bible? Who made the Holy Quran? Was it you or was it our people? We just only try to get acquainted, Reverend. We have lived here in the Western Hemisphere for a long time. And <clears throat> it is time that we get acquainted with each other. I was born in the Western Hemisphere. I'm no foreigner. I'm your brother. And that I'm going to do more for you in the way of establishing our brotherhood than any man ever shall come before you. I agree. So God put it in black and white that I would give my life for you if necessary. I have served two or three jail centers and I have went to the federal penitentiary for you from one to five, they give me. And I say something like near four. All of this was for you. I did not have any choice.
against me that they claim other than I refuse to fight my people for their safety. And I will ever refuse. Just take your time and listen. Because this is no easy job to break you away from an enemy that read you. Because what the enemy taught you, you believe it. Because you had no other teacher. This is quite a job to break you away from your foster parents. But with the help of Allah, I'm going to do so and then kill you, foster parents. It is true that Moses killed his enemies in the Red Sea. That same rod that at intervals was bringing plagues on Egypt and bringing good to Egypt, it also brought finally the death of Pharaoh. I only want you to know, and after that, then I'm through. Know who is the right God to serve if you are righteous and seeking after righteous. I'm here to point him out to you and to point you out the devil who is against you ever since he brought you here. He didn't bring you here to make you no equal to him. He brought you to make you unequal and then make you so much unequal to him you would be unequal to men all over the earth. And no one would want you for a friend. No one would want you for a member in his social equality. (laughs) Nigga can get that kind of place just to hear his name. They want to know who is Nigga. And the white man will represent you your enemy, that he is a dumb slave of mine. Do not take him in your society, he will ruin it. He tells the enemy that he's fighting against with you in the war with him. He tells him to be careful of you because you are a crazy people and if they take you as a society member you will disgrace them. (laughs) Well, he's not far from truth there but he made you like that. (laughs) You are the people that will tear up any society. Because you don't know yourself and you don't know the rules of a good society that you would be able to obey them. You're not like that because you don't know yourself. 
You don't know what society you belong to. But if you follow Elijah Muhammad, I will sit you down in the palaces of kings and queens. And in heaven with your God and my God. Sit you down beside him. I have the key to all of this that makes a better life for you. I am that fellow that you find in the Revelation that tells the world that he has the key of death and hell. This is him talking. The key here only means that the apostle have power over the one who calls death. And he have the power to stop hell from spreading. Take time, Reverend, and let us get acquainted. <laughs> Reverend, my father was a preacher. He was a preacher when I was born. And he learned to preach before he died. Islam. He preached what you call the Baptist uh, organization for 42 years. And then I was able, by the help and the power of Allah, to change him after all of those 42 years. <laughs> I'm going to change you, Reverend. The resurrection of the dead means the resurrection of people that is mentally dead to the knowledge of self and truth. Let's go over here, Reverend, and Ezekiel. There is a symbolic field of dry bones. They're not really bones in reality. They are human beings. Can these bones live? Thank you for that. Son of man, he called his messenger here the son of man. Some of you have preached that he was talking to Jesus. Yes, he said Jesus, all right. But not the one that was here 2,000 years ago. You must remember, again, Reverend, that that Jesus came ahead of time. And that he give it up and acknowledge it that he was ahead of time. <laughs> then he prophesied to you in these words, when he comes, 
Now think over that, Reverend. You, you're harder than they were preaching. Sir. As long as a prophet that is present prophesies of another prophet coming after him, you cannot say he's the last one. You cannot preach and let it be truthfully known and backed by the truth of Scripture that Jesus was the last one and that he's returning. And you look forward for his return. Not that Jesus, but the one he prophesied of that will come after him. Then he tells you in words of what he said, that he was not capable of guiding you into all truth. He said, I can't tell you. Are you ready to now say your Bible is lying? No, it's not. You just didn't understand. I'm risen up among you, Reverend, to make the scripture understandable to you. If the Bible and the Holy Quran teachings is not made clear to you, there cannot be no judgment. This is referred to as truth. That if the truth have not been told to you or taught to you, there can be no judgment because that you, being ignorant to the knowledge of the truth, God would be doing an unjust thing to punish you or destroy you along with the enemy of truth because you didn't know the truth. But the Bible and the Holy Quran teaches you that you will know the truth. You don't believe it maybe, but this man standing before you this afternoon has been taught the truth of the Bible and Quran. Nothing left out. I'm fully armed with your answer. You must know the truth. There can be no judgment until you know the truth. And if this man in the Bible rises up in Revelation with the key of both death and hell, having the knowledge of the devil who kills people, with the knowledge of his teachings. Prepare them for the doom that God made him for. The white race was not even made to be saved. I know you won't agree with me, but stick around. <laughs> One of the professors from Chicago University, uh, sitting in my house one day, he wanted to know, was not they some of them good? Well, I told him like I had told many others. I said, there's lots of snakes. 
some of these snakes is not as poison as the other, but these are snake just a thing. This is the thing that Reverend Martin Luther King agreed with me on. He said, I'll grant you that. They may not be as evil as the other one, but they're all from the same stock. There was a man that was frightened to death by white people because they had tried to buy him over. But he was not so big a fool as they thought. After he met with me that they learned that Reverend Martin Luther King and I was making up a friendship. Together I went down to our uh, place where that we was going to meet and have a, what we call a convention. And when I got down to this place, I represented Martin Luther King, that he was a great man, and that he and I was getting along fine. He agreed with me, and I agree with him to agree with me. Not in his way, but Martin Luther King, he woke up right away. And the devil said, not there in front of my house with the mechanical instruments on, listen to what we were saying. <laughs> then from that meeting on, they had made up their mind to kill Martin Luther King. <laughs> they thought they had prepared him thoroughly to help them lead you to hell with them. <laughs> but you'll see what happened to the poor man. Yes, sir. If his disciples does not follow him, he kills them. <laughs> but here is one, of, <clears throat> one disciple that is not his. Long before I was born, God warned him to touch not mine and honey. <clears throat> Maybe I should not go so far with this. But Reverend, you and I are brothers. We are the blood and flesh of each other. And this same deceiver, this blue-eyed devil, that deceiving you to hold a stand on his side, preach Christianity, his religion, that same devil he once had me in his camp. I didn't preach it. I never preached Christianity. But I thought I was going to be one. And uh, my father was preaching it. And my grandfather was preaching it. And I thought I would rise up as the third in the family and correct these two men. I never believed it like they taught it. And my father and I would argue until finally I got him wavering. Every time he go to the church and preach, I follow him up that Monday morning on his summer.
So when I would be sitting in the church, he'd watch me more than he would anybody. Because he you know I am bound to take your sticks up with him money. And uh, when I chase him, and if I no hiding place to get away from him, I heard him one day telling my mother, said, you know that boy is, he gets on my nerves. <laughs> My mother would laugh. And she says, uh, why don't you answer what he asks you? <laughs> and he'd laugh. He said, that boy is something I'm telling you. <laughs> so he kept on till he met my day to preach. Sent by God he didn't know in his day when he come out telling the people that God has sent him to preach. You know, this is one of the worst lying outfit you ever saw. <laughs> Everyone comes out saying that God has sent me to preach. You ask him, why did he send you? I dreamed that I saw a white man telling me this, and the white man was telling him that. White man was his sender. See? And he's still sending preachers out. Who made the Bible and the Holy Quran. Was it white people? Who made it? They translated it out of tongues, they say. But they didn't make the book. Well, if they didn't make the book, who made it? Someone got to make these books. So if... Uh, some spook they claim that is God didn't make the Bible nor the Holy Quran who made these books. He said he got the Bible from Hebrews and Greeks but where did they get the Bible? Preachers we must get after the white man and to make him to tell us, where did you get these books? You say you translated out of the original tongue. What was the original tongue? It could not have been Hebrew. original tongue was not what he said it is. No. If Moses gave to them a scripture called Bible of God in the book did not pass it through his hand and made it other than true. Take the Bible the white man then had a access to that book all the while. And he take it and he change it, revise it all the time. When he thinks that you and I are learning, the last revives it. He go and revise it again. tells you and I that he only making it better and more understandable. But he's lying.
He thinks that you and me have learned this book, and you want to take it now and check it over and make some other part of it hard to understand. He puts the Bible in symbolic language, and he thinks his slave won't be able to understand it. And that's what the FBI told me, one of them, one day. I had preached and interpreted some portion of the Bible that Sunday. And he told me, he said, they would not have never known that if you had not told them. I said, now. He, I said, now he's confessing to me out of his own mouth that he don't want the Bible truth to be interpreted to the black man. You certainly have an evil man that have sent you to preach and backing you up. Thousands of preachers throughout the country given little pieces of paper from the enemy of the book claiming he's ordained or he's sent by counsel or by this authority and that authority. Brothers, you are wrong. You are absolutely wrong. You'll never be able to stand before the God of truth and justice for him to justify your sending to be a preacher by the devil himself. His enemy. Oh yes, that's who it was. You carry their license and their credentials. They make them out for you. Who have sent me? Did I go down to the city hall to get any papers or authority? I didn't get no authorities from him to preach what I'm preaching. No. The one that gave me the authorities to preach what I'm preaching, the truth, he can't come near him. And he dared to tell me that I'm lying. He knows that I'm not lying. He knows that I'm telling the truth. And wishes that I will have mercy on his old damnable soul that he may enter the heavens with us. I'm the only one to tell you the truth, Reverend. It is up to you to believe it or let it alone. Why well, I warn you to let it alone, it burns the rebel. It becomes a fire when you play with it. And it's burning unlike other burns. But why should you deny the truth for the favor of a people that enslave you? Father, my father, your mother, my mother, why will you favor him now to go along to help him to damn your own people to hell with him? Just think over that. I'm preaching world brotherhood of the black man. I don't want to 
stop you from preaching, but I want to give you the right text to preach. Elijah must first come. He raises himself up in the book of Kings of the Bible, and he follows it through to the revelation. Disciples of Jesus there, when Jesus was transfigured, he saw Elijah there. Right? <laughs> Tell them, son of man, but they won't believe you because they would not hear me. Think over that. They are a hard headed people. They are actually gotten their heads and necks set to not devour it to the truth. <laughs> Stiff neck. <laughs> their neck just can't bend to the truth. Go line them. Son of man, wind them. And if they won't hear you, call on the wind. Call yeah. the wind to come and come from all parts and breathe upon this flame. Well, and that means war. He calls for war. The Holy Quran say, when they are set on all four sides, one calamity after another. When they see this coming to pass, then they will listen. Take and enclose all four sides of the land, so that they won't have no way out. but to come through one calamity after another. This is going on in your beautiful America. You being preachers sent by what I know to be the real devil. Why don't you pray to stop this calamity is from coming on the country. Pray to your God that the white man taught you to pray to. Hey, get Elijah's God. Make him to stop the calamity that Elijah's God is sending upon him. I say Elijah's God because it's Elijah's God that is doing this work. And Elijah's with him. Get a loose from him. I'm not turned down on anything that I ask God to do for me. That is reasonable. I can't stop you from dying. 
That's nature for us to die. None come to stay forever. Regardless to Moses' goodness and walking and talking with God, he couldn't stay here. You don't find where that Elijah died at, but he died. None come to stay forever. Allah did not create the heavens and the earth and man on the earth to live forever. He didn't do so himself. So if the first God died, we don't see no face of him, only his work. How do you expect to live forever yourself? Death was made for us. Not that it come by force of itself, but it was made for us to take us after we have exceeded the law of nature, the natural things in which we were made. Then death is the alternative. So that the God who created the heavens and the earth, he didn't intend for the same people to be here always. It would not be a beautiful heaven and earth if the same ruler rule all the time. You say, well, how are you going to prove that, Muhammad, that God don't live and rule all the time? Yes, God lives and rules all the time, but not that same God. We are not under the direction of the first God in person. No, he's dead. But another one rose up a little wiser than that first one. And it come down today where that the wisdom of man, when I say man, I'm talking about black men. <laughs> the white man is mankind. And he don't mind being called mankind. Because he knows that's the truth. He's not the real original man. But he's like that. Because it's the original man who made him. And he can't get away from it by no means. White man was made by the black man. Yeah, very late too. Very late. Just 6,000 years ago. The black man grafted him from himself just 6,000 years ago. That's late to our 66 trillion and our 76 trillion years. Count our time in trillions of years, count his in six years, in one year, two years. His history divided into three parts. Two thousand years in each part. Our history is not like that. We got three divisions in it, but they are long, long divisions. Let's get back here and talk some of that which we are here to talk on. I had another subject, but since uh, Reverend is visiting us, I want to talk with the Reverend. Do you not see in my work, Reverend, that there's a change in the working? change uh, to come over all the earth of people. Have you ever seen me dress like this? 
when I was in the church, Reverend? Did you ever see our women dressed like that, Reverend? When they was in the church? And Reverend, did you ever hear them talk like this? Did you ever see them solid in the, in the church without singing? You cut them up to sing to fascinate the people. You will take them with their dresses halfway to thighs of their legs uh, to sit in your church. Do not you know, Reverend, that's temptation for you to allow a woman to come in your church half nude? standing above them like I am now, looking right down in their lap. <laughs> By nature, we cannot strip a woman and look at her before our face without having a different thought. Because by nature, we are made like that. And by nature, our first father made her for that purpose. Therefore, after making her, then he wanted you to know that you must not take her and display her in no such nudist way. Because you spoil all your men and yourself too. I'm only one enough to get acquainted. I'm not angry with you. I didn't come out here to argue with you like that. I come out here to teach you. Every time that we have meeting, some of your church people come here half new. But we turn around out there to the door and tell them they can't come in here with that style of dress. They go back. Some of them go back and dress over again and come back. That show you, Reverend, that they would follow us the right way, dress right, if you would help us. A preacher of righteousness would not let temptation come in among his followers to deceive his followers, to follow such temptation to its limit. Reverend, do you not kindly glean out of your spiritual eye that you are wrong for doing these things? You open your door and admit them to come and fill your church with their, dream, with their dresses above their knees. And any style dress they want to come in. Of course, if you would maintain the teachings of righteous indecency, they would get shame and walk out. But you are not condemning this. You are condoning indecency. No wonder that the Bible and the Revelation said or teaches us that the prophet says that he saw the devil 
and his angels, his preachers, dumped into a lake of fire. Reverend, that's talking about you. You say, I got nothing to do with the white man, where he lived. Oh, yes, you do. Because he's the one trained you. And still teaches you. And you are acting just like him. Defending him against God and his <laughs> prophets. That's what you are doing. You aid him in the imprisonment and death of his prophets. Then you say, if you had been here when they was killing the prophets, you would not have taken no hand in that. But how about it, Reverend? I'm one of them. Yeah. And instead of you coming follow me, you follow the white man right on and preaches against me and my God and the work that I'm doing in his name. I am your brother, Reverend, and I want to get you without, without a fight. But if you don't believe and follow me, I'm going to bring my friend with me, and that's God. Don't your Bible teach you that Elijah shut up the heavens? And it didn't open up until he prayed for it to open up. Well, I want you to remember that those scriptures that you read and the book is now coming to pass. He have given me power over the forces and power of this devil. <laughs> and that uh, you don't have any power against us. You are like a child that's under you. You don't want to fight the child as you would have grown up. Because that's a baby. Same goes for you with me. I don't want to fight you. Because you are no match for me. 